Hi, it's Mike. Welcome to my shop. I hope you're having a great day. This video is part two of my one watt amplifier build. If you haven't done so already, please have a look at part one. It discusses the whole amplifier at a high level. We talk about the components. I show you how to build the chassis, the eyelet board, and the overall schematic and what we plan to do here. This video, we're going to be finishing off this amplifier. So we will be doing the wiring of the eyelet board and the chassis. We'll be doing the resistance checks, the voltage checks, and then ultimately plug in into the guitar and seeing how it sounds. As I mentioned in my other video, I'm going to be doing a complete build document. So once everything is done and I'm happy with it, I'll be linking a full build um, document. So it will be a schematic, layout, and a parts list, and perhaps you can make something like this for yourself. So let's get into the build. Let's discuss a few things. Get a nice soldering gun. I have a Haku 907. I'm really happy with it. Uh, get yourself a decent gun. It's worth it. Um, you'll need some wire strippers. I have two different kinds. One that actually grabs the wire and one that you don't. They both seem to work okay. You need a multimeter. Uh, the solder I use is the Kester 6040. Seems to work pretty good. Get yourself some decent solder. It flows a lot better. The wire you're going to be using for the filaments is the stranded 20 gauge. I have green and yellow. I like to keep track of that. Uh, the rest of the wire is going to be solid core. Um, we typically use 22 gauge. And the other that is just normal hookup procedure. So let's get into it. So here I am populating the eyelet board. I'm going to start with the capacitors. So one thing you want to be concerned about with the capacitors is your negative and positive. So electric electric capacitors are polarized. So you want to make sure that you're getting the right polarity. So the negative goes up to the top. You can see a little arrow. And you typically can also tell there's a little bulge right here indent on the capacitors. And that is your positive. So this is the positive rail on this board. So a good habit to get into when you're populating the board with resistors is actually checking the values of your resistors. 10K at 2%. So what you do is you take your multimeter, you set it to ohms right there. And then and you can see that's 9.99 ohms. So that is a right on resistor. So typically what I do is I go through the whole circuit and validate all the resistors. So I got all the components on the board all soldered up. And so what I do now is make sure all the grounds are properly attached together and go ahead and click off all the extra leads that you don't need anymore. So just get some side cutters. And so this is pretty much ready. So all we can do now is perhaps populate it with some extra long wires. So when we mount it, we can just run those tails to this tube sockets. So a thing that novice builders seem to do a lot and make a minor mistake is not running the cables on the back side of the board. Um, that's quite important. And you'll hear it time and time again that the, their voltages don't seem right or not getting voltages to the other tubes. And part of the problem is, is the wire behind the board is wasn't put in. So make sure that you install the wires underneath the board. So the eyelet board's all done. Everything is populated and I pre-wired so I can get at the back of the board and do all the wiring here. So that is ready to go. So what we'll do now is we will work on the chassis. And once all the internal chassis wiring is done, we will go ahead and pop this board in and finish off the wiring. When you're doing the 6.3 volt heater circuit, it's AC voltage. And what you want to do is you want to make sure the wires are neatly wound together. And how I do that is with a drill. So, and that helps with the cancellation of the AC signal so it reduces the hum inside the amplifier. So that's how you get a nice tight wound cable. So I did a bit of wiring here. So what we did is we wired the mains up so the AC coming in line. We wired the transformer up. We wired the output transformer up to the switch and to the output jack. We did the heater circuit, so the filament circuit. So we went from the transformer to the pilot light, 200 ohm resistors to ground, and then tightly wound the cable all the way down to the both tube sockets. What I like to do is color the cable so I know that the yellow goes to pins four and five on both tubes and the greens goes to pin nines on their tube to kind of keep that in order. I have the input resistor down at the jack here and then I have a shielded cable that comes all the way down into pin number two of the input tube. Um, I like to try to keep as most noise out of the signal as possible so the shielded cable helps. The way Fender used to do it, they would have uh, just flying leads everywhere and it, was, it would induce noise in the system. We don't want to do that. So we have the control, the tone and the volume all wired up and so we're good to go. So now that the boards already was done, 
we can just pop the board in and we can wire all the leads up. So after building hi-fi amps for a while, I'm, can I realize that yes, tube amps can be pretty quiet. So the three ways that uh, noise can get into your amplifier is poor grounding. So you want to make sure that your signal grounds are all together. You want to make sure that your power filter grounds are all together. You want to make sure that um, you have a, the virtual center tap for the heater circuit. So that's one method of grounding your heater circuit. You want to make sure that your filament circuit is away from any of your signal wires and you also want to make sure that your input wire to your first tube is shielded and is away from everything because that can induce uh, noise into your system as well. So the build is pretty much complete so what we'll do now is we'll take our multimeter set it to ohms and we will go and check all the resistance values and we will compare them against our schematic and we'll see if that everything checks out and once it all checks out then we will put the tubes in and fire it up. So some of the biggest concerns is just the, the resistors on the power supply to make sure that they actually read. So those are 10k, 10k, add them both up and then we'll go over here that's connected and then we'll go over here that all makes sense, that all makes sense. So we'll just go through and then our bias resistor and that should check out, yeah, that makes sense. So just go ahead and double check all your work. So we'll continue doing the testing and then we'll put the tubes in. Now I must admit that firing up an amp for the first time is always a bit nerve wracking. Um, there's a special processor that uh, you need to follow. The way I used to do it was I would actually just hook everything up to a multimeter and turn it on and watch the B plus come down. And if the B plus didn't come down, then I knew I had a wiring issue and I'd quickly turn it off. Um, I recently made this uh, current limiter. It's a light bulb current limiter. If you haven't seen one of those, uh, Google it. It's a must have. I will do a little video on mine and how I put it together, but uh, I never used to have this before, but now uh, I, I like it and I would recommend you making one as well. You wanna plug the amp into this and what it does is if there's too much current, the light bulb will light up. And I'll show you how that's all wired in another video. And so what I do now is I have a dummy load, an 8 ohm dummy load that simulates a speaker, which I'll plug into the back of the amplifier. Plug in the tubes. So the tall one, the 12BH7 is power tube. And then the 12AX7 is preamp input tube. Okay, here we're ready to go for our initial startup. I have the 8 ohm dummy load hooked up. I got the tubes in. I have the amplifier hooked up to our current sink. And if this light bulb shines, then I know I have a dead short and we'll turn it off immediately. I have the multimeter set to DC voltage and we have it hooked to the B plus. So we'll turn the amp on. If this lights up, we'll turn it off immediately. And then if it doesn't, we will watch the B plus and it will go up. And then when the tubes warm up, it should gradually go down and we'll start recording voltages. So the amp's on. B plus went up to 333 volts, 34 volts. Now the tubes are warming up. It's coming back down. And we are going to level out here at... 307. So we're leveling out at 307 volts, 308. Okay, so that looks good. So we'll record that voltage and we'll move on to the next voltage testing. So we'll go through and measure all the voltages on the board and we will calculate our bias. And if our bias is in the normal operating parameters, we'll plug it into a speaker and we'll see how it sounds. Mm. So I'm in my living room here and I have it all plugged in, ready to let you hear what it sounds like. I went through all the wiring and through all the voltage checks and everything seems to check out okay. I did increase the cathode resistor a little bit so I could bring the bias down a bit. It was biased a little bit hot and I also made a mistake on the input jack. But I sorted that all out and everything is good. 
I have a 12AX7 in it right now and the 12BH7. I have actually been experimenting with the 12HT7 where it has a little bit less gain and it also sounds pretty good as well. It doesn't really break up on the top end as much. So I'll be plugged into my Tweed Deluxe speaker. So I got it just the jack in the back and I just got it plugged in directly to the speaker. It is a Weber 12 inch Allen Co speaker and I'll put a link in the description on what that speaker actually is. And I'll be playing my American Standard Stratocaster. <laughs> I think that sounded pretty good. It really comes across like a champ of Princeton. Um, pretty much that's what it is. The front end is a Princeton. Um, but it doesn't get as loud, so that's pretty good for practicing. I like it. So what I'm going to do is a part three video where I'm going to enclose it into a proper cabinet. I'm going to make a matching speaker cabinet. And I think I'm going to order a 12-inch uh, ceramic speaker for it as well. And I will actually put in a proper demo track and some bass track and uh, a backing track so you can actually hear what it sounds like, you know, in a recording environment. So please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can get notified for the next video of this. And I hope this inspires you to build something similar. And once again, thanks for watching.